2008. We are at the home of Mr. Ron Sinclair at his home in Fort Collins, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Mr. Uh, Sinclair, and thank you for participating today. If we can, let's start out. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you were born, and a little bit about your family. Uh, I was born in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the railroad tracks are now. <laughs> uh, 10 20 24. Uh, went to school there. Strange thing might be, there was a dairy farm right across the road from where we lived, but for some reason, their silly rules, they could ride the bus to school. I had to walk a mile. <laughs> and the bus wasn't that loaded, but it was just one of their rules. And, uh, uh, I'd done all kinds of things. I'd done a lot of snow shoveling when I was young. Did you have any siblings? Any brothers and sisters? One sister, she's still alive. She lives in Denver. Yeah. What did, what did your father do for a living? He worked for the railroad. Okay. He tried farming for about a year, but he decided he didn't like that. So he started for the railroad and right after World War I and worked there till he retired. Uh, uh, what I done for I went in the service is just whatever come up, mostly ranch work, because in them days that's about all there was in Wyoming. Uh, breaking horses, feeding cattle, driving cattle. And, uh, uh, what was that? When the war started, just shortly after that, a friend of mine had a string of bucking horses up north of Cheyenne and had to get them to Estes Park for a rodeo and they couldn't get no trucks. So I trailed them from 40 miles north of Cheyenne into Estes Park. On, right. on horseback? <clears throat> yeah. How long did that take you? Uh, three days. Oh. Had 47 head of horses besides the one I was riding. That was fun. <laughs> I'll be done. Do you know where you were? Uh, and do you remember when you heard that uh, the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor? When they bombed Pearl Harbor? You know, do you remember where you were when that when you I heard the news? I was almost Hawaii, oh, not quite. Oh, so you had uh, uh, gone into the service before the, the war broke out? Mm, well, let me see. I don't remember just the dates, but uh, it wasn't too long after. I had a military or uh, agricultural deferment because I was working on a ranch, and I just decided it was time for me to go, so I went in and volunteered. And I wasn't quite 16, I had a month to go yet. Is that right? They didn't know whether they were going to let me go or not, and they said, well, if my father had signed the paper, they'd let me in, so I, I wasn't. Where, do you know where you were when they attacked Pearl Harbor? I was probably in boot training in Farragut, Idaho. Well, now, uh, being in, uh, from Wyoming, how did you come to choose the Navy? <laughs> You'll never believe it. I went into the recruiting office and they said, what branch of the service would you like? I said, anything but that damn soggy Navy. <laughs> and about two minutes, I was in the Navy, he jumped up and says, we're looking for fighting men. <laughs> so that's how I got in the Navy. <laughs> Is that right? And, uh, it's amazing because living in dry land, Wyoming, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know how to swim. I'll I'm be done. That. Is that the reason you didn't want to go to the Navy? Is because? Uh... Oh, not in particular. I just didn't know whether I'd like the water or not. Uh, so once uh, you re were uh, you enlisted, uh, where did you go for your boot training camp? 
Farragut, Idaho. Okay. Took boot. Let's see, we had four weeks of training. Then we went to Astoria, Oregon and got on the ship, got it all outfitted and loaded and headed for Pearl Harbor. We was there not too long after they sunk the Arizona. Was there quite a bit of damage when you arrived still in, in, in Pearl Harbor? Uh, I don't know. We didn't get to stay long enough to see. I mean, we were just there long enough to take on supplies and everything and headed for the islands. Now, uh, did you start off, off on an aircraft carrier from the beginning or when you left yeah. Oregon? Okay. As soon as I come out of boot training, like I say, we decommissioned or commissioned the ship and went right out the river into the ocean and from there to Hawaii. And, oh uh, gosh, I don't remember the name of all them islands there in one of these books. Uh, that's been a long time. Oh, sure. Fair enough, fair uh, enough. Uh, what, what were you trained for? What was, uh, what was your duty on the ship? I was just first class seaman, whatever, wherever they sent you, you go here, do this, do that, just whatever. I was captain's orderly for a little while, just lots of different things, and then clean up, painting, whatever they needed, uh, on lookout a lot. And my battle station was a twin mount, 40 millimeter. I was a trainer. Uh, what was it like uh, growing up on the plains of Wyoming, uh, going out to sea on a ship? Did you get your sea legs, or how was uh, how was that first experience coming out, going out out to sea for you? That what? Uh, Getting your sea legs. Did you get your sea legs coming from Wyoming, or how was how was the experience uh, on the sea for you? I didn't do too bad with them, I guess. But going out the river, I can't think of the name of it right now. Astoria. Uh, Columbia. Columbia. Some of the old Navy men that was on the ship, officers and all, got seasick. But that's the roughest water we had all the way. Oh, is that right? Uh, all the way through. <laughs> nah, I never had much trouble that way. What what was li life like on an on an aircraft carrier? Uh, busy. Yeah. Most of the time. Uh, I didn't have anything to do with the airplanes or any of that part of it, other than clean up the messes they made. <laughs> uh, uh, we was in some pretty rough ones. They, I can't remember the name of the other carrier, but the suicide plane come down and took the elevator that went from the flight deck down to the hangar deck, took the whole elevator out. And hmm. I think it said it took them about three days to put it back together, so they were working pretty fast. Wow. So from Oregon, you guys went to Hawaii, picked up supplies, and then where where from Hawaii did you go? Uh, where is... Ah, uh, here we are. That's my discharge. And you said you were on the aircraft carrier Marcus Island, correct? Yeah, CVE-77. Head officer, Rear Admiral Sample. What What were your thoughts about him? Did you like him? Was he? A... Yeah, he was nice. Yeah. yeah. I was captain orderly for him for a while. In here somewhere, there was a picture. <laughs> I guess I should say there's pictures all over everywhere.
What were conditions like on the on the aircraft carrier? What was what? Living conditions like. Uh, where, where did you sleep? Um, what was the food like, and such? The food was not great, you know, but it was very eatable. Uh, What would you do for uh, entertainment and time off when you weren't on duty? How did you keep yourself entertained? Sit on the fan tail mostly. Oh, is that right? much else to do. Yeah? Uh, I was looking for one in here that... I'll give you Tokyo. I'll be darned. So it looks like uh, we hit hit all of them on the way up, all the islands. And when uh, the peace treaty was signed, we was 50 miles out of the harbor, at Tokyo. So we didn't have to fight with them then. But, so it looks like you went from Hawaii to Guam, and then off to uh, New Guinea, it looks like, or the Philippines. Yeah. And that's where, it looks like that's where you first saw action. Is that where you first saw action was in the Philippines? Yeah. We just went right on up, like I say, to Tokyo. What? What's it like for somebody like myself who has no idea uh, to be in battle? Uh, were you were you afraid? Uh, rough. Rough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You couldn't help but have fear because you know, suicide planes coming at you was loaded with anything and everything that would blow up because they knew they wasn't coming back. They didn't even have enough fuel to try to get back. And I mean, when they come out, that was it for them. And there was some of them got pretty close. One of them come down and took the guardrail off of the bow of the ship. Uh, didn't explode till it hit the water, so we made out all right. But there was a lot of them goings on. Hmm. And it looks like from uh, the Philippines, you went to Iwo Jima. You were part of that invasion as well? What? You were part of the Iwo Jima invasion? Uh, oh yeah, we was we went in and softened it up for them. For the soldiers coming in and the Marines, we went in with torpedo bombers and, and fighter planes and softened things up before they come ashore. How far off ashore were you? Were you quite a ways away, or could you see the island from, oh, from the yeah. ship? Yeah, yeah, most all of them. And I, I hear it was a pretty amazing sight to see all the ships uh, yeah. in the uh, in the ocean. Everything flattened out. Huh. And then from Iwo Jima, you went to uh, Okinawa. I mean, part of that invasion as well. Yeah. Yeah, we just followed that trail right on up to Tokyo. We had to go back to Pearl Harbor for motor repairs once. I don't remember just when, between which ones, but when we first come out of Pearl Harbor, they made fun of us, our shooting. You had to practice and you went in and out. And they'd making fun of us, so we'd been out, I think, probably about in here somewhere when we went back for them repairs. And we was in the dry dock at, in Honolulu, and they had a gas leak fire all around us, and both our engines tore down. We couldn't move. They finally got a couple of tugboats in there and got us out of there. But I was standing up on the flight deck with a fire hose 
trying to keep it from getting too hot because right down below it was 500 pound bomb storage. Oh, <clears throat> Paint was peeling off of the bow of the ship oh, and that's geez. what I was doing is working the fire hose back and forth to keep it from getting too hot. You could have gone up at any minute, huh? I guess we got it done. Uh, huh. Well, uh, there were some of them you didn't have time to get scared. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, so what what was it like for a, a cowboy from Wyoming to be at sea? Very, very different. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, I'd never seen that much water in my, my whole life. So, In fact, the 30s was the dry spell up in Wyoming and just getting out of that in the 40s. So far as water goes, uh, little bitty puddles. <laughs> huh. and, and what about going to such places as Hawaii and, and some of the other ports? I mean, those must have been very strange to you as well, to see lush green and palm trees. And was that, uh, what was that experience like? Uh, I didn't think much of them palm trees. They, they're pretty, but there's no shade. I yeah. mean, just yeah. one little bubble up on top. Uh, Were you able to go to sh to go ashore anywhere else besides Hawaii? Any of the other places in the Pacific? No, we never did any of them. We just they was in a hurry, and we just went from one to the other just as fast as we got them slowed up. So you were at sea the whole time. Oh yeah, three and a half years. Well, like I say, that one time we went back to Pearl Harbor for about a week, I think. So in three and a half years, only one week out of that you were on land? Is that right? Yeah. Huh. I guess I always kind of done things the hard way. I got out of the Navy, I could have got a high school diploma. Uh, but I, somebody told me that if you ever wanted to go to college, you had to have one. And I don't know, I decided I'd wait and do it, so I went to night school after I come home, got my regular diploma. But then I didn't ever have time to go to college. <coughs> uh. I worked for the USDA Agricultural Research Station in Cheyenne for about 17 years. And got a boss in there that was drinking way too much. And I couldn't get along with him, so I quit. And I come down here and I was superintendent of the CSU agronomy farm for about three years. And they got another one of them kind of bosses. So I quit there and went to work sugar beet research, those buildings that's still there. Uh -huh. It was government buildings, that's where we worked there. I was doing breeding work, cross breeding work on sugar beets. I had little plots all around, have to drive around to raise seed. And that was interesting. Hmm. I was mostly by myself all the time. Once in a while I'd have some help for a day or two, but not very often. Yeah, yeah. And then I got enough time in to retire, and I've been retired since. Yeah, oh, good for you. Been quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, getting back to, we'll backtrack a little bit here. Getting back, uh, then from Okinawa, you guys headed up to uh, mainland Japan. Uh, were you going to be part of the invasion of Japan if, uh, I guess the question I should ask is... There's we went in ahead of the invasion. Is that right? And then the torpedo bombing and... You were going to you were gonna soften once again, soften up things? Soften them up, yeah. For the, before the Marines and all landed. So we was just about first all the way. Ha. Uh, do you remember uh, when you first heard about uh, the atomic bomb, when they dropped the atomic bomb? Do you remember uh, remember hearing about that at all, and what were your thoughts? Yeah, of 
course, right at the time, we didn't think much about it, I guess. Didn't know. Because it was the first one that ever happened. And, uh, I see. What? Lost my wife, I guess, about three years ago, cancer. Oh. So, <clears throat> it's kind of lonely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's a picture of me when I first got home after the war. What was that like? But in those three and a half years, were you able to uh, uh, send letters back and forth to your family? Did you keep in contact? Oh yeah. Well, yes and no. You could send them, but sometimes it was a long time before they got out to pick up the mail and take it back. Cause due to the fact that the ship was moving and they had yeah. to send a plane out from somewhere to, to pick it up from all the ships, so sometimes you didn't hear very often. Uh. Uh, and I think I called them on the telephone once or twice. Did, did your, your folks ever talk about that after the war? What they Did they worry about you? Because they probably didn't know where you were at. You, you, they probably couldn't. You couldn't tell them where you're at. Did they? Did your uh, mom ever talk about how she would probably no, worried about you? Or a lot of things you weren't supposed to write about. Yeah. That's one reason you didn't write much because there wasn't much to write about. Yeah. But uh, no, they didn't seem too worried. Uh, I guess it's kind of like the first time I rode a Brahma bull. <coughs> My mother said, "If you land on your head, it won't hurt you. So go ahead." <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it didn't. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, I worked around a lot of different ranches before I went in the service. You know where Lake Hattie is? Well, that was the old Hattie Jones Ranch, and Andy Wilkinson owned it then. And, well, I'm not sure he owned it, but he either owned it or had it leased. And him and his son and me were pretty good buddies, and I worked for them up out there a lot. Was that before or after the war? That was before the war. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. After the war, I guess I just spent most of my time working here and there and everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I worked several places after I retired. I worked for... Oh, gosh, the Forest Service for a while, CSU Forest Service, and I can't remember the name of that one place that worked quite a while. <laughs> uh, well, how long uh, after Japan surrendered before, before you started back for home? Were you, uh, did you go ashore in Japan at all? Uh, after they surrendered, or no, no, we turned around, went right back, uh, around through the canal. Oh, is that right? Back up to Boston, and they put the ship in uh, what do they call it? dry dock, and then being the leaders from this part of the country. Instead of giving us a discharge there, we had to get on the train and go clear to Bremerton, Washington for our discharges. So you probably went through Cheyenne or past Cheyenne to, oh, to get yeah. your discharge to come back, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's what seemed kind of silly to me, too. Take you clear through there and then come back. And when we got into the base there where they released you, there was four of us that come there, and somehow or another, the guy that was supposed to be keeping records missed me. I went and had all the shots and everything, and the next day they said, well, you can't go till you've had them shots. I said, what do you mean they've had them? Had them yesterday. No, it's not on the record. I said, well, then you got one choice and one only get them shots in there again and get out of my way because I'm going home. <coughs> and I guess I didn't know what they'd do, but I guess they didn't hurt me. So. Oh, you got the shots again? Yeah. <laughs> I had all them, I think it was about seven different shots they give you 
So I had about 14 of them overnight. <laughs> uh, so you were ready to you were ready to get out at that point. Yeah, yeah? I you had enough of the Navy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you can you do you remember when you first got home and the homecoming and seeing your folks and what yeah, that was like? Just my mother and dad and sister, and she was in the Navy. She was in Florida, so she wasn't home when I first got home. And mom and dad just come like always. They, I don't know. We wasn't. I don't know what you'd say. The real close family, as far as visiting and all is concerned, yeah, you just yeah. say what was necessary and let it go at that. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm still a little bit that way. Yeah, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, what What was it like coming home? Did was it a hard adjustment going from? The military back to civilian life. How was the adjustment for you? Not bad. Yeah, yeah. I had a job on a ranch waiting for me when I got home. So, so you didn't take any time off to rest or anything. You went. No. You came home, went right back to work, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, when when you enlisted in the Navy, did you go by yourself, or did you go with buddies, or did you guys did a bunch of you enlist together, or did you enlist by yourself? I enlisted by myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, along the way, in the in the time you were away, did you ever run into any anybody you knew from home? No. No. Yeah. No. I had a couple of real good friends. One of them lived in Frisco, California, and we were pretty good buddies all the time. He come to see me a time or two since after we got out. And then he got married and got busy with the family like I did, and just didn't cooperate. Yeah, yeah. Anymore. Yeah. Have you ever been uh, back to any reunions or uh, ship reunions or anything like that? No, I don't know. How come we just didn't? Yeah. Guess I didn't know about a whole lot of them until I got this book, and of course I moved from Wyoming down here. Right, Bev, about forty-five years. Nineteen sixty-three. Nineteen sixty-three. Yeah. Yeah. That's been quite a while ago. All oh, this town, when I trailed it. A bunch of horses from up there. The west edge of the college was the f was out in the country. I'll be darned. <laughs> and that's where I went. I went right down the road on the west side of the college and up through Masonville, or did you go up, uh, up the Thompson to Loveland and up the canyon. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Here's a book. Got a little bit in it. That's uh, Double Diamond Riding Stable up at Horsetooth. And different pictures there if you want to look at them. If you don't, why that's I will, yeah. fine too. There's different places to help build the corrals. And I put the roof on the cookhouse for him. I didn't get paid, but I got to ride horseback all I wanted to, so that was all right. That was their chuck wagon that they took out on trips. And this different equipment. And that's some of the horses out there. And that's some of them just leaving to go on rides. And that's a picnic area. And that was a pretty little van, uh, wagon they had to take rides in. And that's the covered. Well, that's that cook wagon with a with a canvas on top. Did Did you miss riding when you were in, when you were away at all? I mean, oh, yeah. that was a long a long time to be away. Since we've been since we've been here. You notice I got my horse right out yeah. in front. Yeah. Since we've been here, I've been trying to talk him into letting me have that piece of ground there, 
get me another horse. <laughs> well, I mean, when you're in the Navy, did you miss miss being away from uh, being on a horse? Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, somewhere I don't know where it is, but somewhere I've got a picture of me on a donkey in Mexico, Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh. Yeah. We never did get much time off as far as free time's concerned. Out in the, uh, out at sea, you had a lot of time that you didn't didn't have anything to do. <laughs> that is, I guess there wasn't much for reading and stuff like that. So, well, was it hard? I mean, growing up in Wyoming, when you had all this open space, was it hard to be confined into on a ship like that? Did you feel con Very caged? And the hangar deck, where they worked on the airplanes, I had the bunk right below it. And they worked on planes all night, sometimes up there. About the first two weeks, I didn't sleep. <laughs> I finally got used to it. But. Uh. And of course, there's times when they wasn't working on any either, but most of the time they were. Uh. And then you could go out on the fantail and lay down if you want to, where it was a little better. Was it hot? I mean, being in the tropics, was it hot and, and humid? and? Well, yeah. yeah. And you had no problems with uh, catching any of the uh, diseases or anything like that, the tropical diseases at all? Uh, no, yeah. I don't. I don't know that anybody aboard my ship had any of them. Of course, there wasn't any of us ever was ashore. Oh, true. Yeah. Enough to find out, I guess. Yeah. And a picture of my company. I'm up in here somewhere. We'll take a we'll take a picture of this at the end of the interview. I'll uh, this what? I'll, I'll record this at the at the end of the interview. We'll record it, and you can point out. Okay. Uh, well, where you are. Yeah. What was it like uh, going to some of the, the big cities? You said you went to Boston and such. Was that an experience for you? You know, a small town uh, country boy. Or? I didn't care much for them uptown places. I, well, I just wasn't used to that many. Things in one place. Yeah, yeah. That's a a list of the ones that was in the company. Yeah. And that's just the United States Naval Training, Farragut, Idaho. A lot of pictures in there. move very good anymore. I had both shoulder caps broke. Is that right? And the doctor said we could operate on them. It might help and it might make them worse. I left the office right away quick. <laughs> you broke them from riding accidents or how did you, how'd you break your... Uh, what was it, Bev? Oh, you're in a car accident. Well, I guess it was a car. Something hit me. I didn't know for sure what, but I wound up on the ice over against the curb, and that's that right? when I snapped them, I guess. Huh. But like I say, the, down here I can do anything, but when it goes to reaching out or up, they just don't go. Made it all those years riding bulls and such. And huh? it, all those years riding bulls, yeah. and no problem, and, and then a simple car accident, huh? There's a picture of the bunch of us in Tijuana, Mexico. <laughs> oh, you made a made a port stop in Tijuana? No, we just went down on leave. Oh, okay. We had a few days leave and we just went down there. There's some pictures in Hawaii. Huh. There's some pictures of board ship. That. Uh, 
That was a mascot we had, that little black dog. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I don't know whether we were supposed to or not, but they didn't ever say nothing. <laughs> yes. Uh. Bunch more of them that I was in with. What well, What was it like meeting different people from different parts of the country? I mean, you know, people from the south or from uh, the seems east. Like most of them was from California and around in that area. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Region. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, I do too know why, I guess. They weren't thinking much about getting on the ocean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just more of them. And that's when we were going through the canal. What was that like? Going around. What was it like going through the canal? Slow. Yeah. But outside of that, it was very pleasant. You could. I had plenty of time to look at everything. There's myself and my dad and some of the horses up on the ranch. Another one of some of them. Hmm. Met just some more pictures. Ain't sure what them do. <laughs> I think that's all that's in that one. Yeah. Well, we'll go. We'll go through these at the end. Of, at the end of the interview, we'll go through these together. Okay. Yeah. Well, tell me. Uh, what was your? How do you see your experience uh, in the war? How did it have an effect? Did it have, or did it have an effect on your life? Uh, how did it play into your life? Do you think, or, or did it? Uh, I don't think it had much effect. Other than just kind of seemed like lost time while you're there. I mean, it wasn't something that you'd choose to do killing people, but on the other hand, when they're coming at you with a whole load of explosives, you better get busy. <laughs> well, well, you say it's something you wouldn't choose to do, but uh, you chose to enlist. What, what, what made you decide to enlist when you, when you did? Makes it right. What, what, how did, why did you choose to enlist when you did? What, what were your thoughts? Why did you go into the service? Uh, I had, I said I had a agricultural deferment mm -hmm. and and you could have stayed out if you wanted to yeah but, but why did you choose to well they'd always fussing around you gotta do this you gotta do that and changing this and changing that so i just said to heck with it and like i say i wouldn't have got in if my dad hadn't signed the paper because i was a little too young he was in World War One. I. I don't know, one picture is here somewhere too. Uh, you got them over there, Bev? Oh, here they are. That's my dad. Oh, not too many years before he passed away, he could still get into his uniform. Is that right? That's when done. he was in the service. Uh. That's him and I there. And that's him just after he got out got of the out. service. Yeah. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. My mother lived in Des Moines, Iowa, but he lived in Missouri. There was the town was right on the line. And... Well, now did, did uh, since he'd been in the war, did did he have any problems signing those papers? Did did you have to nudge him at all, or did he agree? Or... No. Yeah. And that's picture me. That's my wife and myself. We was getting ready to go to the Frontier Day show. If you went in a horseback, it didn't cost you nothing, so. Uh. Ah, 
as you can see, I'm very clumsy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you wanted to talk about that I left out? And Bev, if you can think of anything that I haven't asked that uh, stories that you'd like him to tell as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there were two. Once when the piece of shrapnel hit. What? When the shrapnel hit you from the oh, Japanese it's suicide in that little plane. box up there on the... And tell him that story. Yeah, tell the story about when you when you got hit with the shrapnel. What happened? That was that uh, suicide plane that come close to us and took the guardrail off. The shrapnel, I was at my station on the Twin Mount 40. It's just down over the edge of the flight deck. And when them suicide planes took that railing off up there and the, they had all kinds of shrapnel, just anything to blow up and hurt you. And believe it or not, that hit the flight deck and hit me behind the ear. I've still got a little bitty knot back there. Is that right? Let's see if we can... And how that thing could possibly... Hold, hold that up there, right there. As sharp and everywhere else it is and not cut you all to pieces, I don't know. But I do too. The good Lord was looking after me. Huh, so it hit the plane hit above you then. You were below the the, the uh, rail. No, he was up to the bow of the ship by the lookout, and I was on the first Twin Mount Forty right back of it. And when that thing blowed up, this stuff tore holes in the flight deck. But this and I just hit flat for some reason. I don't know why. Did it knock you out or uh, what? No. No, I didn't ever have any ill effects from it that I know of, other than a little scared when I looked at it. <laughs> huh. Wow. But how anything that sharp, except that one little flat place. It, it hit you on the flat part? Is that right? It hit the flight deck and bounced up. It's a good thing it hit the flight deck too, probably, or it would have been coming much faster. Yeah, would have killed you probably. <laughs> the size of that, it probably would have killed you. Huh. Were you awarded the Purple Heart for that? Did you receive the Purple Heart for your injury? No. Uh -huh. hmm. that seem right. uh. I ain't sure I ever told anybody about it. <laughs> I suppose I did. Somebody, well, some of the others on the gunnery station wouldn't know known about it because they picked up pieces too. But... Did yeah. you have to go to the, um, did you have to get medical treatment or? for it, or how badly were you injured? It didn't bleed or nothing. It just, made, right? it just made a little bitty knob, hard knob right behind my ear there. Of course, that's probably half of what's wrong with the hearing. <clears throat> I'll be darned. And what was the other story, Beth, you wanted him to tell? The, when you were going on the plane and the captain bounced you off so he could go. Huh? When you were going, supposed to go oh. on the plane? Yeah, you had to get, you could go on the planes with the pilots if you got permission. And I'd worked around and signed up and got permission to go. And one of the big shots decided he needed to go over there. So he took the seat that I would have been in. He come back with both shoulders blown apart. And he lived, but he was in sad, sad shape. And if he hadn't decided what, to go, I'd have been, been you? right where he was. Uh, it's you just got to believe that the good Lord was looking after you. That's all. Because there wasn't nobody else had time to. <coughs> hmm. Yeah. Well, is there? Uh, I guess we could start to wind down the interview. Is there anything else that I didn't? Uh, didn't ask you that you'd like to talk about, or, uh, well, I guess we could talk about your post-war. After you got out of, out of the war, you came back and you, we talked a little bit about your career. Uh, and uh, did you use the GI Bill at all for any of that, for, for, for schooling at all? Did what? Did you take advantage of the GI Bill at all? Yeah, I went to, uh, what did they call it now? It was agriculture. Uh, that was kind of interesting too. The bunch there was, some of them was pretty rough. It was night school. 
and had this one big old guy that was the teacher, Marine, and he had one guy that was always interrupting and messing around, and one day he just come on and took him by the seat of the pants and shirt collar and set him outside. He says, when you're ready to behave, you can come back. And he did come back <coughs> quite a bit later, but he was a different person. <coughs> <coughs> But it was so funny because he wasn't a little man. I said, Marine just picked him up so easy. <coughs> uh, now, did, now, did you know your wife before you went off to war, or did you meet her afterwards? I met her before, but we didn't get married till afterwards. Did you write back and forth during the war? or? Yeah. Well, like I say, once in a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, that's kind of a funny way I met her. Want to tell that story? She was teaching school. She was a school teacher. And I was working on the ranch where she was teaching. And it's the first time in my life I ever had gone to the employment office to get a job, because it always had plenty. And uh, for some reason that day, this lady was in there and hired me and went back to the ranch and like I say, she's teaching school there. I liked her pretty good and I guess she liked me. <coughs> I put a mouse in her drawer in the school room. <coughs> I ain't sure she liked that, but <laughs> anyhow, it was long time after that before we got married. Uh. Yeah. Well, she was a good one, good wife, I'll tell you. Tell how you serenaded each other. Huh? Tell how you serenaded each other. You did what? how mom would sing trying to get your attention and you would, were doing rope tricks trying to get her. <coughs> yeah, I guess we did that. <laughs> huh. Well, it's been a good life. There's been up and downs for sure. When you look back at them, they scare you to death. But coming along, you didn't think that much about them, I guess. <laughs> huh. Well, I guess as we as we wind down this interview, uh, is there any anything else you can think of, Bev, that you wanted to put on the have him talk about on the tape? I'd just like to know more about your experience in the war. It was rough at times. <laughs> more stories. Yeah. Huh? More stories about things that happened. Well, all that ever happened is shooting at each other. Had to be some things. <laughs> no. So, uh, when you were in in the battle, uh, what the Japanese would come out and, and try to attack your your carrier? Or? Oh yeah, they come right out of the sun. And suicide planes would come right out of the sun. It was hard to see. Oh, I didn't show you my. I hate to admit it, but I guess it must be getting old. <laughs> they had a knife my dad made for me. They was taking them in so fast that they didn't have uh, enough supplies to give the military services. So my dad made that one for me out of a spring out of a locomotive of the Union Pacific. Is that right? He sent it to me, and then I made that sheath for it. Huh. And in the Navy, you had to have one. They, of course, some of us didn't for a little while because if somebody done something like that. But did did you tell him, or how did he know that you did that you needed a knife? Oh, uh, he was a member of the VFW, and I think he kept up okay. pretty good on things through that particular way. And I didn't even know he was 
doing it until they got it. So. <laughs> and they had no problem because it wasn't military issue? They had no problem with you carrying it? Oh, you had to carry one if you're yeah. in the Navy. But it, because it wasn't military issue, uh, your commanders had no problem that you had it? No. Yeah. Never did have to use it. Yeah, yeah. Which is good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that name that's on there, you probably didn't ever read the funny papers back that many years ago, but in the funny papers there was a strip that had the uh, gasoline alley, it was called. And it had this uncle and a little boy, and they called the little boy Cairo for some reason all the time. And my uncle decided that was a good name for me. And I lived with it for quite a few years until I moved down here. <laughs> and then I decided I was going to go by my name. <laughs> Somebody say something to me, I just didn't answer. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I said, nothing, but you're going to call me by the right name or I ain't going to talk to you. <laughs> and they, they got around pretty quick. Well, the, when it really happened, though, was with Mom. No. Mom called you Kale one night. Tom and I were still at home, and Mom said, Kale, and you wouldn't yeah. say anything. And she said, Kale, and you wouldn't answer her. <laughs> she said, Kale, why wouldn't you answer me? And he said, so typically unlike him, well, if you call me by my right name, I might answer. And Tom and I were rolling on the floor laughing, and the harder we laughed, the better he got. But after that, he was wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah. I lost two daughters when they was just babies. And then I lost a son. Man, how long ago? 92. Huh? 92. 92. Uh, that must have been hard. That must have been very hard. Yeah. 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 Uh. My granddaughter, she married a boy she went to college with, <coughs> and they live at Boone, Colorado. You, maybe you never heard of it. It's clear down in the corner, a little bitty place, but they got limousine cattle, black cattle, and they raise them and sell them. So they keep pretty busy. They just had a sale recently here. What'd they sell? I don't Quite a few bulls. So they keep busy that way. He just got hurt in a truck wreck here not long ago. But his spine is pretty bad, but he's mm. doing fine now, so mm. that's good. So you had five children all together? You had five children? Four. Four children? Huh? You had uh, four children? Yeah, uh -huh. two daughters, little ones that I lost, and then Bevy and my son Tom. And how many grandchildren? Four of them. Four, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You seem like a, a pretty honorary guy. Was there any, on, on the ship, did you guys ever play any jokes or pranks on each other? Oh, any yeah, stories there? Oh, yeah, always doing that. Yeah. They didn't bother me much, I guess. Yeah. One way or the other. And then out working jobs on ranches, you didn't do that kind of stuff because you was too tired. Yeah. They work, most of them worked you 12 to 18 hours a day, just depending on what they was doing. Branding season, when he's branding cattle, you just branded till you got done. <laughs> do you think growing up on a ranch uh, and then going off to the service that maybe you were a little bit tougher than a lot of the other guys? I mean, uh, just because of your background, and, and working so hard that you're tougher than quite a few of the other guys as far as... Yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Uh, Tell about crossing the equator. Huh? Tell about crossing the equator on the ship and the initiation. 
Yeah, the initiation when you cross the equator. Oh, that, that, yeah. That's pretty famous, isn't it? They got pretty pretty rough for that. What what kind of things did they do to you? What what was the initiation like? Do you remember? Uh, I didn't like it too brutal. No. I, I mean, too many people actually got injured. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why well, I didn't like it. I mean, just just some of them got too rough. That's all there was to it. And, uh, one guy had a leg. I don't know. They had him in the hospital there on the ship for you know, a year or more, and that's. Well, I didn't go for that kind of stuff, but it's all right in one way, but I think they just go too far. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them go too far. I don't like to see people get hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> I know you've been pretty busy after the war, but have you ever had a chance to go back to some of the places that you served during the war? to travel to Hawaii or any of the, no? No. Hmm. Well, I guess if uh, there's nothing else, we'll, we'll wind down this interview and then we'll, we'll go through your pictures. There's the church we got married in at Jackson, Wyoming. Oh, that is beautiful. Church of the Transfiguration. Yeah, it's pretty, that whole one, what? Oh, one wall is a big glass window. You can see the mountains. Uh. And that was a friend of mine. <laughs> when I lived out at the horse station, he'd be up on the front porch every morning wanting something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Pet deer, huh? Uh. Well, let's wind down the interview and then we'll go through your pictures. If, uh, that'll work for you. Okie doke. Well, I want to... Yeah, I don't know much of anything else. Like I say, there were probably other things, but... <laughs> well, it's been 60-some-odd years, so... to remember, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've had a pretty full life, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, kind of got bit in this housing crush here. I had a condo in town, and the market then, when I decided to sell it, was valued at 124.9. But boom, the bottom fell out, so I took quite a bit less. But I had to get rid of it. I couldn't afford to keep two of them. And I love this one. I really like it here. Oh, good. good. Got a nice sunrise and sunset. Kind of out in the country a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you uh, for your time today, uh, Ron, but more importantly, I want to thank you for your service to our country. You're both welcome. Long Beach, California, I went to visit my aunt and uncle just before I come home after the war. So you were back from the South Pacific at this point? Yeah. Okay. And that was uh, <coughs> June of 45? Okay. My dad made this for me. They couldn't keep up. There's so many enlisting and getting drafted that they couldn't keep up with the supplies for knives. So in the Navy, you had to have one. So my dad made that one out of a spring of a Union Pacific Railroad engine. And I made the sheaths for it. And on the sheath is uh, is Ko, and that was your nickname given to you by your uncle. Yeah, for a long time it was. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's my dad, and he could still get into his uniform. That was years and years after he was in the service, and they belonged to the VFW, and that's what he's getting ready for to go march in the parade. And uh, he served in World War One, correct? He was in World War One. Yeah. 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 I mean, he got a got a picture of me in a uniform, my sailor's uniform. That was April of '42. Now, when you went off to boot camp, before you went overseas, did you have uh, any time to come home? 
before you left? No. No? We left out of boot camp in Dastoy, Oregon, where they commissioned the ships and down the river and to Tokyo. So once you left, you were you were gone. You didn't come home till after the war. Then that once you left Cheyenne, no, uh, uh, not till clear after. I'll be done. That's my sister Barbara. She was in the waves in Florida, and she didn't get home till after I did out of the Navy. Did she leave before you? Did she or did no after? After okay. That's my horse I bought for twenty five dollars. And the saddle and the rest of the gear was $25, so 50 is all I had in the whole works. <laughs> <coughs> he was a good one. <coughs> About approximately what year was this picture taken? Mm, 40, in, long in there. Is that right? Close. In fact, I think it was the last frontier I got, got to before I went in the service. Did your father take care of your horse while you were gone, or what did you do with your horse when you went off to, to the Navy? <coughs> did you see that picture of them horses in here somewhere? <coughs> that was my dad's place up in Hawk Springs, Wyoming. He had uh, 1,024 acres up there, so he had plenty, plenty to eat and plenty of room. <laughs> so he, he took care of your horse while you were away? <coughs> He took care of your horse, yeah. yeah. Is this the horse you, you drove the, the horses up to Cheyenne or up to Estes with? I was just getting ready to ride in the parade then and ride and pick up for the wagons. Is this the same horse you used to drive those those horses to, to Estes? When you drove No, I didn't have him yet. Then. Oh, okay. <clears throat> 